Now that we have this ready, the next part is going to be to put the circuit board back together. But oh no, let's say you broke your circuit board. I'm gonna show you how to make it. First thing you're gonna want, of course, is a Radio Shack pre-printed circuit board. Kind of draw on the other side what our circuit is going to look like. Essentially, we're gonna kind of fit it in there. We're going to, essentially, we're going to fit it in there. We're going to use actually all three mounting holes. So you may need another screw. We're going to use all three of them to get it to fit in. And this way, it's going to be a little bit more supportive because, again, these are thicker LEDs or, or LEDs, RCAs. So it's going to require a little bit more, uh, it's going to have a little bit more weight on there. Okay, so again, we'll uh, worry about the where we drill in a minute. Now, technically, I don't really need to cut this board up. And I'm probably not, to be honest with you, so I'm just going to round the edges off because I'm noticing that it fits in there quite nicely, nothing's going to get out of the way. I want to make sure that obviously it's not cutting through here, so we're going to kind of cut that too. And we're going to round off the edges, definitely. So let's move this out of the way for a second. Take the Dremel. Once these are rounded, or uh, cut off and we're gonna go ahead and just sandpaper the edges just to round them out a little bit so it's cleaner looking. So next part is gonna be to go ahead and uh, figure out where these are gonna go. For all intents and purposes you usually want to use a Dremel to drill through this but I'm gonna go ahead and use a high-speed drill. This is an expense like one of my expensive DeWalt's. This is actually from Harbor Freight and it's been better than my DeWalt. But you want to make sure that you let it cool down in between. If it gets too hot the board will crack. You don't want to go too slow either. And of course you want to make sure there's plywood underneath. I'm using an envelope so it's not right against the wood. It's pretty well done. I had to open up this hole a little bit more to open up for not only the screw, but also for the little, there's like a little notch that goes above there. The next thing is of course you're going to want to get some washers. The next part, and you will need a Dremel for this, is to drill a center hole with a tiny blade or bit, I mean, so you can put the um, cables right through it. The next step is going to be to kind of just go ahead and make sure that it all fits in there nicely. I have uh, certain washers that I've bought to fit in right there. And over here as well, I have some little smaller ones. If you don't have them, make sure to go to Lowe's. And then we have the little center hole where these are going to go in. Next, you're going to want to tin the tips. Make sure that you add just a little ball of flux at the very end. This is going to make soldering everything a lot easier. So I'm just going to tin it there. You'll notice over here that I've already marked this area. What I did is I put it inside the tone arm and then I put the place over and that's going to show me where the RCA's are going to come in. You'll notice I cut one RCA so it's slightly uh, I guess better placed than the other if that makes sense. My goal is I'm going to basically have them like this. The wires will come in that way and then they're going to go where they need to. So let's start cutting or doing out from there. So I already went ahead and did one so you can kind of see and uh, we have the white RCA, the positive, and it's got a tiny little uh, bus cable, which I'll show you in just a second how we did that, and it's already there. Now, I even, I wrapped the bus cable over it just to hold it down, but of course, we're going to want to solder that in just a moment. Then I also, in the back here, I just secured the ends because I bent them into 90 degree parts, and I secured the ends using a little bit of the flux. So the next part is going to be the white RCA negative. And that is also the part that's going to go to the ground. What I also did here is I drilled a hole and I'm going to separate the tone arm cables by RCA so that way it's going to be a little bit easier. I have plenty of slack on my tone arm cables that I'll be able to do that. So first thing is to cut out, you know, a well, decent amount of cabling. Kind of picture where you want to go. Remember that all these are connected so if you have like let's say if I wire something here then I wire some later there, we're going to need to break the connection with the Dremel. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of have that right here. Mm, let's see. Right there. 
So I'm going to just kind of take it. I'm going to bend it away from the other. And again, I'm just going to wrap the cable right underneath. So I'm going to slide that through there. And I'm sorry if you guys can't see too well, but, you know, that's what happens. Now on the other side, magic happens. First, I want to make sure that I bend these. Uh, let's kind of trim them down a little bit. Whoops. No idea where that went to. But I'm just going to go ahead and bend that away from this. And I'll later I'm going to take a Dremel too and just kind of clean that up a bit. I noticed that uh, this is kind of too loose. You can kind of see there a bit. So I'm just going to take my pliers and 32 gauge cable, man, this stuff is strong. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to take it there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on both ends just to keep that still. Then you'll see we have that part there. Next, you're going to test all your connections, again, using your multimeter. And uh, right now, the way you're going to do it, again, just... Uh, uh, nothing soldered in, but you want to just make sure that, you know, one end of the bus cable touches the other end of the bus cables are, you know, currently touching each other. Okay? But what you're, you're going to notice is, here's a bus cable here, and here's the bus cable there. And that's touching. Why? Because that entire row... Oops, sorry, you couldn't see there. What you're going to notice is that this bus cable here, and this bus cable here touches. Why? because this entire part is conductive. So at that point, you're going to want to take a cutting wheel on your Dremel, and you just want to separate the connections out. So for example, we have here. Okay, so at this point again, we have broken any continuity from one area to the other on the board itself. So let's just double check. Okay, so far that's the way it's supposed to be, but it's no longer here. Start uh, locking in your RCAs to the actual bus wire. So, make sure you don't stick your hand in there too close, of course. This is where a screwdriver is super handy. See how that locks in right there? Because I had it all balled up ahead of time. But sometimes you just gotta add a little bit more. Now also, while you're at it, if you think you know where you're gonna go ahead and place your cables, if you wanna put a little bit on the other side for them, you can do that. Make your life easier and re-thread things. So again, the first three cables that I'm going to do are going to be on the left side. It's going to be the blue, the white, and the black, which is obviously the ground. Pull it as tight as possible. There we go. There's red and green. And then we need... Come on, you can do it. It's a boy! Upon pulling the string out, or the red cord out of this, I accidentally ripped part of the copper out of the actual wire. If that happens, don't panic, and don't try stripping these cables, because that's not going to happen. Instead, just very lightly press them against, you know, your, or hold them like this, and then with your soldering iron, just burn the rubber jacket clean off. Okay, so as we discussed, the blue and the black are going to go together, and they're going to go against the white negative. And the white um, cord is going to go against RCA white positive. So this is where you really want to have steady hands. Remember, why the reason I recommended the whole go ahead and you know start tinning the ends of it or half flux is because you're going to use both hands trying to do this you're not going to have a free hand to flux around. See what I did there? Okay, red and green, you guys are in the way. I'm going to need you to calm down. Ow, that's hot. Beautiful. The honest 
honest truth is, is if you really felt like it, you wouldn't even need to do this. You could just solder your RCAs directly to your tone arm wires or your cardus wiring and uh, it would be the same. Obviously, this, things makes, this makes things a little bit easier. So the very first thing is we're going to get now, we are done, we're going to go ahead and test everything. So the first thing I want to do is wide RCA ground. We're going to try it again here. Nothing. Good. Here. Great. Here. Here. Nothing. Before we close it up, we're going to take the ground cable and we're going to add it to the grounding part that we made right here. Last but not least are these little tone arm cables. This thing is most likely not going to be used. Sorry to break it to you. But this is honestly tight enough in there. You can hang it from there. And it's fine. This is holding a lot. So this may have this is gonna have to be bent up. So go ahead and get in the habit of destroying things. So you want to go ahead and just take it like that. Okay. And we're gonna insert each RCA in. This is where I was slightly off in my calculations. So in that case, let's see how we can manage this in. Or about how the RCAs are bent. They can, these can take some abuse. These are exceptionally thick RCAs. Some of you may be worried about the RCAs not holding, or you know, getting yanked out. Again, where the way I strap that down, it won't be an issue. But if it is, go ahead and just take a Dremel and open this up just a little bit. Be careful not to hit your RCAs. That's gonna allow us to insert a tie wrap in. So what I did is, I got one tie wrap around the RCAs and around the screw on the left here. Then I did one all the way here just to pull this a little bit more to the right so it doesn't dig into the metal part. And uh, that's it. I've already tested not only the, you know, to make sure that there was continuity there, but I've also tested the RCAs against the little parts of the tone arm here. And it looks, it, you know, gives me a nice clear signal, resistance level of like less than one. So, so far, so good. Now let's put it all together.